All right, hello. This video, we're going to be covering uh, our final review for the final test. This is D3. And we're going to go over solving and factoring. Right, these are two big topics throughout uh, first semester. So some general notes, right? We, we, the, how you solve depends on what the exponent is. So if it's an x to the first, right, we've done that a million times, right? You can just do the algebra steps like add 6, divide by two, blah, 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 and you get your one answer, okay? And then we started to do quadratics, x squared, and then when you solve those, um, sometimes the algebra steps will work, but most of the time you've got to do one of these other methods, right, which involve getting zero on one side, and then like this one would factor x minus three, x minus four, right? Remember when you factor here, they got to multiply to this positive 12 and add up to negative seven. And what you actually have now is two linear equations, right? Now you set each little one of these to zero and say, if they multiply up to zero, then either this thing has to be zero or that thing has to be zero. So you set the little parts to zero, and then you actually have two linear equations, which you can just use x, uh, algebra steps for. Right? These are both x to the first linear equations. So now you have it back here, uh, and then you can just solve it with your algebra steps to get two answers, right? x squared will have two answers. So then the final piece of this was we did like x cubes and x to the fourth. I think that's the highest it ever gets on the test. And the idea there is you want to break it down into either x squared or x to the first because we already know how to solve those. Okay, so when you have a higher level exponent, like three or four or something, you want to factor it apart until you can get to the little x to the first or x squared pieces and then solve those. All right, so that's a big picture. Um, one other thing that I think is kind of hard is knowing which one of these methods to pick when you have an x squared. So a quick review of that. Um, when This is it's especially true for x squared is what this chart's mostly about. So if it has like just x squared, you can use your algebra steps. Like this one, you could minus 15 and take the square root of both sides. Okay, um, factoring's a good route. Um, not everything will factor all the time, but you can look for like GCF factoring. Um, you can look to see if it's like three terms like this. Oftentimes you can factor these because they're not too bad with like x and x. Right, put x and x there. Um, I don't do factoring if this number in front's like 8 or something. Then it gets a little bit harder to factor. You've got to do that long factor. So usually then if I have an 8 there, I would try either graphing where you just graph and find where it crosses on the x-axis, right? Or uh, go to quad formula. Okay, so graphing works for any real answers. And then if if you have imaginary answers, uh, you might have to do quad formula, right? And this is kind of a fallback. This will work for any x squared. You can always solve it with this. If any of these other methods aren't working out, you can always go back to this. Uh, it's a little bit more work, but um, that's why I try the other methods first and then kind of use quad formula as a fallback. Formulas and stuff, you won't need to memorize them. Um, you will have them available to you on the final. Okay, so let's just start solving some. So here's three for you. And um, you can solve them if you want. Uh, otherwise, maybe just kind of pause the video and, and think through how, how you would do them, like what method, because I think sometimes that's the hardest part. But you can either, you can maybe do both, solve them, think through the method, uh, and then on pause to watch the solutions. First one, um, because it has just x squared in it, I would use algebra steps, right? So I would minus 36 from both sides. And then I'm going to take the square root. And don't forget, there's two answers here, right? You're going to have a plus minus pair. So we have plus or minus. And then the square root of positive 36 is 6. So square root of negative 36, remember, is just 6i, right? 6 imaginary. Negative square roots are imaginary. So this one has two imaginary answers of plus or minus 6i. Okay, uh, the second one I would definitely uh, try to factor. In fact, the last two I would try because they start with x squared. So basically, I'm just going to put x and x and then take 12 and see if I can find a pair of numbers that multiplies up to 12. Since everything is positive here, that makes it a little bit easier. And then adds up to 7 until so we get 3 and 4. Okay, and then if you set the parts to 0, we get answers of negative 3 and negative 4. 
Okay, the last example, again, I would start by trying to factor it. If I saw this on the final and I was a high school student, I would do x and x, and then I would take 5, right? But the only things that multiply to 5 are 5 and 1 or negative 1 and negative 5, and neither of those give us 3. Okay, so basically that tells us it does not factor, right? So factor method is out. Okay, so if I go back to my chart, right, if I think back to that chart, I can't do algebra steps because it has x squared and x in it, right? I can't do that. So um, I'm kind of left with graph or quad formula, right? And personally, I don't know what I would do. Graph is nice, but if it has imaginary solutions, it's not going to work. So maybe let's, let's try the graph method first. I'll give that a shot first. For the graph method, I'm going to hit the y equals button. And then I'm going to clear out anything that's on here. Make sure these plots are off. If they're not, go up and hit enter. So that's what it looks like when it's on, but I want it off. Okay, and then I'm going to hit x key hat thing squared plus 3x plus 5. And this method is really powerful because it'll get you any real answers. All right, so I'm just going to hit graph and up. Oh, Nope, it never crosses the x-axis, so I don't have any real answer. So, graph method failed me here, um, so I'm going to be left with just quad formula. Okay, and so just a review of, of the quad formula for this. Um, you have A, B, C, so A is 1, B is 3, and C is 5. Right, you just take them from right there in the equation. And I always do the little check mark first, right? So, since I know that comes first, I'm not going to write all of it out. I'm just going to do that part first. So I'm going to do b squared minus 4 times a times c. So I get 9 minus 20, and that's negative 11. So there, that's why we got imaginary answers, because we had square root of negative. And there's no perfect squares that evenly divide 11. So all I'm going to do is break it to 11 and negative 1, so that the negative 1 is my definition for i. So that becomes i root 11. Okay, so the full formula again. We already did the radical part, so I'm just going to do x equals the opposite of b, plus or minus the cleaned up radical, so i root 11. And we divide all of that by 2 times a, so that's just going to be 2. And I think that's it. Right, there's no way to simplify that at all. The 2 doesn't evenly divide this stuff, so we just leave it there, and that's our two imaginary answers. Okay, so uh, this one just says factor. Remember, factor just means break apart. So you don't actually have to find the answers for x here. Just factor, just break it apart. So pause the video and give this a shot. Okay, so for factoring on this one, because um, this video is about both factoring and solving, they kind of go hand in hand. But uh, to factor here, they have a GCF of 5. Okay, and generally speaking, if the first thing is negative, instead of pulling out 5, I'm going to pull out negative 5. Because you want this first term to be positive if possible. So I'm going to pull out a negative 5, right, and divide them all by negative 5. So it would be negative 5, then x squared minus 1x, and then minus 12. Okay. And then now I'm going to try to factor this part. And so this is why it's helpful to have x, uh, positive x squared, because I'm just going to put x and x here. Okay, and I got to multiply up to this negative 12. So that means there's going to be one negative and one positive factor. All right. And then um, if we make a list, I think 4 and 3 are going to work again if the 4 is negative and the 3 is positive. That'll add up to negative 1, multiply to negative 12. And you can kind of check that real quick if you want, but that should be right. Okay, and that's it. So we pulled it all the way apart, and that's what it looks like broken apart. So we have three little parts, three little factors, negative 5, x minus 4, and x plus 3. And again, we don't have to solve, right? It doesn't say solve, it just says factor, so we are done at this point. Factor just means break apart. Okay, so another factoring one. Um, and so this one says, what is the factored form? And this one on the final, I remember being kind of tough because there's no GCF. And so that means we can't do our quick factor where we just put X and X here because that wouldn't give us 16X squared. 
right? So we've got to do something else. By the looks of it, it's going to be like 4x and 4x or something like that. So um, at any rate, you can do the long factoring, but honestly, since it's multiple choice, I think an easier route is just to take these answers and see if you can find one that matches. So what I mean by that is like if I take letter A here, I can see that when I FOIL, that would give us 16x squared, and then that would give me positive 12x, negative 3 times negative 4x, and then do that again, positive 12x, and then one more time, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And I can see that that one doesn't quite equal. It's close, but I have positive 24x in the middle, not negative. So that one's out. So you can kind of work backwards off the answer choices until you find one that, that works. So pause the video at any rate and give it a shot. Letter C, I'm just going to eliminate that one right away because everything's positive here. So there's no way I'm going to get a negative 24 in the middle. So I'm going to try B now. So uh, 4x times 4x is 16x squared. 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. Multiply those, negative 12x. And then negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Okay, and that looks real good because we have minus 24x in the middle, 16x squared, and positive 9. So letter B here is going to be the right choice. So... Um, just on the final, you know, if you're not sure how to do long factoring, I would, I would do that. Okay, solve one, right? So this one we got to solve. And remember uh, from before, there's going to be four answers, right? The exponent drives how many answers. So this one is a pretty tricky one, but uh, see if you can remember how to factor this. Okay, so this is um, three terms, kind of like we had before. Uh, except it starts with x to the fourth. So the trick is we're going to factor it just like we did before, where we have two little binomials. But instead of x and x here like we normally have, we're going to put x squared and x squared to make the x to the fourth. Okay, and then the rest of it is the same. We have to make the other two numbers multiply to negative 64 and add up to positive 12. Okay, so I know I'm going to need one negative and one positive if it multiplies to negative 64. And the positive one should be bigger, right? 12 bigger. So I'm just going to make my list, and that doesn't work out. 2 and 32, that's not 12 apart. 3 doesn't work. Let's try 4. 4 would be 16, I think. And I think that would work. So I want the 4 to be negative and the 16 to be positive, because that'll add up to positive 12. Okay, now that I broke it apart, um, I could actually factor this further to x plus 2 and x minus 2, but there's no real need here. I can solve both of these with algebra steps. So now that I've broken it apart a little bit, factored it apart, I'm going to set them equal to 0 and just solve. So I'm going to add 4, take the square root of both sides, and don't forget again, there's two answers here. I'm going to get plus or minus 2. Other one, I'm going to minus 16. And now when I square root, I'm going to get imaginary answers because I'm square rooting a negative. So we will have plus or minus 4 imaginary. And that's it. That's four total answers. Plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, i.